this video, video number four in this module, number nine on oligopolistic market models, uh, discusses the concept of game theory as it applies to the oligopolistic market model. If you'll recall, with the oligopolistic or with the game theory model where there are two players, we didn't need any algebra, all we needed was a two-dimensional payoff matrix. It looked like this. That's pretty ugly, but it, it, it works. I don't have to start over. Now, assume that there is uh, an industry, say the widget industry, that consists of two uh, manufacturers. Manufacturer A and manufacturer B. A and B. The two sellers in a widget industry. Now, Unlike, monopolist, unlike monopoly or competition, these firms can't just use uh, revenue and cost data to determine what their profit maximizing strategy will be. They need to consider what the other guy in the industry is going to do. So let's suppose that the two strategies that both of these firms could take would be to charge a high price for their product or a low price for their product. So they can charge a high price or a low price. B can charge a high price or a low price. Now let me put in these diagonals here. Remember that Corporation A is going to get everything above the diagonal. Corporation B gets the values below the diagonal. So let's uh, make the following assumption. Suppose that if both companies charge a high price, they will make uh, $500 profit per period. Now, whether a period is a day, a week, a month, or a minute, it doesn't really matter per period. So, here in this box will be 500 and 500. That's what both will get if they both charge a high price. Now, let's again make another assumption. Let's suppose if one company reduces its price by 20 percent, it can steal half of the other company's business. Lowering the price by 20 percent can steal half the other company's business. Okay, let's suppose that Corporation A now decides to charge a low price while Corporation B continues to charge a high price. That means that Company A is going to be able to steal half of uh, Company B's business. That leaves B with a profit of 250. Half of 500. Now, how much will Company A get? Company A, let's put do this computation right here. Company A will get its 500 that it got from its original customers less 20 percent. So there's 20 percent point two and this is 100. Okay so that's the how much less it's going to get from its original customers because it's, ca it's charging them you know 20% less as well. So 500, the original amount minus 100 is equal to 400. That's the profit that firm A will be getting from its original customers, but notice it's got, and now it's getting uh, half of uh, company B's customers too. Now it would have made $250 from Company B's people, except for the fact it's charging them 20% less. So if we multiply that by two, 0.2, we get 0, 10, carry 1, 5. So 20% of 250 is 50, and if we subtract the 250 
that it would have received from company B's customers minus 50, which it's not getting because it lowered its price by 20%. This is 200. And so the total rewards to company A from reducing its price is 400 from its original customers, 200 from its new customers that it stole from company B. That would be 600. So, 600 would go here. Now, if company B lowered its price and company A kept its price high, it would be just the opposite of this one. Company A would be the one that had half of its customers stolen, so it would only be getting 250. Company B would be getting all of its customers, half the other guy's customers, so we'd be getting all of that revenue, less 20%, so that would be 600. Now, let's look at this cell right here where they both charge 400. I'm sorry, they both charge a low price. I gave it away, didn't I? Where they both charge a low price. What would each be getting? Well, if they both charge a low price, if they both reduce their price by 20%, there's likely going to be no redistribution of customers. They'd all have their own their old customer base, but now they'd be charging each guy 20% less. So, you know, 20% of 500 is 100. They'd be getting 500 minus 100, or they'd each be getting 400. Now, if you have a question about this computation, just post it in the uh, Quiz 9 forum of the discussion board. Okay, so there we have our payoff matrix. Okay. So, when each guy, when each company decides what they're going to price, are they going to charge a high price or a low price, they're going to look at this payoff matrix. As you might guess, it's a prisoner's dilemma. Let's suppose that we have to figure out what company A is going to do. Is company A going to charge a high price or a low price? Okay, company A is saying, well, if company B charges a high price, Will us, company A, be better off by charging a high price or a low price? Notice that, in this case, the low price beats the high price. So company A is going to charge a low price. Yeah, but what if company B charges a low price? Is company A going to be better off by charging a high price or a low price? Low price. Notice that company A's dominant strategy is to charge a low price. 600 beats 500, 400 beats 250. And as you can imagine, it's the same with company B. Company B says if company A charges a high price, shall we, company A, charge a high price or a low price? Low price beats um, high price. If company A charges a low price, Will company B charge a low price or a high price? Company B, below the line, low price or high price? Once again, low price beats the high price. So company B's dominant strategy is to charge a low price. As a result, both will charge a low price, and here will be the equilibrium cell. Notice that's a prisoner's dilemma because what's better for both of them is to charge a high price, but as a result of competition, they will both be charging a low price. So the act of competing, firms competing against one another, is essentially a prisoner's dilemma. Now, in our second video, where the two guys on the island, they were stealing from each other and winding up being made worse off, how did they resolve this issue? They communicated. They said, let's stop stealing from one another. So they communicated. They said, hey, let's stop stealing from one another. These guys, as you can imagine, are going to communicate. They're going to say, hey, let's stop cutting prices on each other. Let's stop engaging in this mutually destructive price warfare. So, when they decide to do that, they can move back up to here. Deciding not to compete, deciding to set prices, which you can see they have an incentive to do, that's known as collusion. Collusion is an agreement, and in this case, it's an agreement not to compete. 
The problem with collusion is a violation of antitrust policy. So you can see that, left to their own devices, this model shows that firm, the oligopolistic firm will charge a low price, and we can see the incentive for them to collude. Now, the problem with antitrust legislation, once again, in America, you're innocent until proven guilty, is that it is the, on the onus, it is the onus of the government, the Justice Department or the Federal Trade Commission, to prove that the firms are colluding. So, that means they have to find some proof. There can be tacit, T-A-C-I-T, -T, tacit collusion. Tacit means spoken or, unplied, or implied. Spoken or implied. If the, gov if the government cannot prove collusion, they are not in violation.